I'm Jesse and this is part three of the three-part video series Whole Farm Water Planning. In part one we talked about how the field days were organized. In part two we talked about the theory behind whole farm water planning and here in part three we're going to cover whole farm water planning in practice. This is an aerial view of a farm near Fairview, Alberta. On it we planned out a proposed new pond outlined in red up in the left hand corner. Over to the right, you'll see an existing pond outlined in blue. You also see that we've indicated some water courses, which only flow during major runoff events and are dry the rest of the year. The pond outlined in blue was not constructed properly and will be lost to erosion if not repaired. Even though the new pond is larger and could possibly expand production, the economic reality of losing the existing infrastructure has pushed us towards repairing it. This is the ground level view of that existing dugout. It's the only water source for the paddocks to the south and also provides a critical access point for this important pasture area. Without this dugout and its wall intact, the south paddock is not usable. It was constructed incorrectly and has a fatal flaw. Year after year, this overflow pipe was eroding the wall of the dugout. Eventually the wall itself would have failed. Because of this, the repair project was the clear choice in comparison to the construction of the new dugout at the other location. Culverts should never be used as dugout overflow structures as they have limited capacity and tend to concentrate storm flows into an erosive stream. The first step in correcting the situation was to strip all the vegetation and topsoil off the existing berm. Here you'll notice the overflow pipe in the middle of the berm. The next step was to safely remove the culvert without destroying the berm itself. Then we replugged the hole of the berm and brought it back up to a consistent grade. Seeing that we had the machine on site, we also dredged out behind the berm to improve the holding capacity of the dugout. Last and most importantly, we constructed a proper overflow structure that could easily discharge any overflow and would not erode. This is known as a level sill spillway. It's level to minimize flow velocity and prevent erosion. We were confident that this would work, but we were concerned some erosion still might occur at the lip. This work was conducted in the summer of 2014, and in the spring of 2015, the first runoff event tested this new feature. Here's a short video of showing you how well this functioned. Water flowing through the overflow, out with the dog. Jack, March 17, 2015, thing of beauty. Water slow, the floor down there. I'm running over the overflow and down into the cooling. Here is what the overflow structure looks like now. You can see that it is well vegetated on either side and there's no evidence of erosion down the water course in the center. This picture was taken in the summer of 2016. This project and its execution clearly demonstrates the characteristics of whole farm water planning. We looked at the whole vision, planned out possible future infrastructure, and then implemented our activities based on the economic reality. We corrected a serious erosion problem and secured the functional use of a very important pasture and dugout. This is why whole farm water planning is so important. It provides a framework for moving forward with improving farm infrastructure, promotes the efficient use of limited capital and energy resources, while improving soils and production and minimizing erosion. If you want to learn more about these kinds of things in the future, please stay in touch with the PCBFA. Become a member or just contact them at info at pcbfa.ca or follow them on their website www.peacecountrybeef.ca. Once again, my name is Jesse Lemieux. I'm an instructor that's brought up on occasion to the Peace Country to help teach these workshops. I really hope you've enjoyed this three-part video series. Have a great farming season.